Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock. It's time for another video. And today I'm going to do a video that I have had more requests for than any other video that I've ever done. You can tell it's an important video when I make notes. I've got a ton of notes here. This video is all about how to pitch a product to a magic company. Now, I'm not talking about creating the product here. I'm not talking about creativity. I'm not talking about how to get a product that you can create and you can release to a, uh, to, to a uh, magic company. I'm not talking about that. There are videos on Magic TV about how to be creative, how to create a creativity wall. I've done tons of videos like that. This is assuming that you have a kick-ass, awesome, awesome product and you want to actually pitch that to a magic company. How do you go about pitching that product to a magic company? How do you go about pitching it and having a good chance of them saying yes? Now, I've... Um, i uh, got a little bit of experience in this. I've been in this industry for a long time. Initially, when I was first in the industry, I pretty much worked exclusively with World Magic Shop, and I bought a ton of stuff out through World Magic Shop that then went into Murphy's Magic. Um, I also did a... Uh, project with um, uh, Practical Magic on kid shows. That was back in the day. When I came back to the industry, I released a ton of stuff with Alakazam. I released a ton of stuff with um, uh, with with um, Murphy's Magic, with, with Penguin Magic, the 1914. I've released stuff through Vanishing Ink. I think one of the only big ones that I haven't worked with at this point is Illusionist. Maybe one day. You never know. Um, but I want to talk to you about how to pitch a product to a magic company. And this, this information that I'm going to give you comes from A, my own personal experience, but also B, it comes from the experience of being good friends with people like Sean Dunn and Mandy and Nick and Eric at, uh, at uh, Penguin. Lloyd Barnes is one of my best friends in the world. I'm really good friends with people like Titanus and George and Javier over at Murphy's Magic, D. Christopher and Jack over at the 1914, Harry and Peter Nardi and Andy and all of those guys. Everybody, I know them and I've spoken to them and I've asked them some advice. How would you pitch a magic product? What do people need to know about how to pitch a magic product to you guys? I've taken all of that information. I've condensed it into this video right now. Uh, and this is what you need to know to pitch a magic product to a company. So buckle in. We're going to take it point by point. Here we go. Okay, so the first point is make sure it's a physical product. That's really important. I'm sorry to tell you this, but downloads are on the way out. And the reason is it, it, you can't, you can't, you downloads are pirated basically the second you release a download it's going to be available on various different pirated sites within seconds at a fraction of the cost and unfortunately in this industry people want to take a shortcut they want to buy those tricks very very cheaply they can do so by going to a pirate website there are websites out there that will take they will literally have within half an hour if you've got a new product out that's a download only it'll be online on one of those websites within half an hour and magic companies know that and so what they are looking for is they are looking for a physical product take for example keymaster even if somebody rips off my keymaster and puts it online they're not going to be able to supply the physical products with them and if they do eventually work out a way of supplying the physical products it's going to be substandard and it's going to take them a while so these days i'm not saying never never pitch a company on having a download because there are companies that still do quite well with downloads um the penguin partner program are releasing downloads all the time i know the 1914 kill it with downloads but as an industry as a whole Downloads are on the way out and most magic companies are looking for a physical product. And when I say a physical product, I'm not just saying, hey, here's a trick. You can supply a pencil with it. Not that I'm having to go at illusionist at all. I'm not. But you want to try and come up with a physical product that's a little bit different. You can't just buy it off the shelf right you you have to have something with it you know it has to be a kind of an adapted thing so look at my cheeky project with alakazam for example it was a cheek to cheek deck but it had a, ro a uh, floating rotational stack built into it and the cards were tapered to allow for an instant reset that is different to any other cheek to cheek deck out there because people might look at it and go oh well i'll get the pirated copy for a couple of quid and i'll buy a cheek to cheek deck that won't work with the routines that i put on cheeky so first of all have a physical 
product. Very, very important. Next point, try to have an online presence because there's more chance that a company will say yes to you if you are a name within this industry than if nobody knows who you are. Now, and that's not a deal breaker. I'm not saying that uh, if, if you've never been heard of in the magic industry before, then you can't sell a trick to a magic company because that's not the case. But if you have a name within this industry, there's more of a chance that they will say yes to you. And the reason is, and you have to understand this, that magic shops and magic production companies that are releasing magic, it is a business to them. They are in the business of producing magic. They have to make a profit. If they don't make a profit and they make a loss, then they're not in business and they're going to shut down. So they have to make a profit, which means that every time they take a product on, every time they take something on, they are taking a risk. Is it going to sell? Is it going to be popular? Are people going to buy it? Is it going to make money? And there's certain ways that they can mitigate that risk. And one of those ways is if they're working with somebody who has a well-known identity within the magic community. If you are a Greg Wilson, if you are a Jay Sankey, people will just buy your new product, whatever it is, because everybody knows who you are. So you don't have to do this, but if you wanna be successful, I would suggest having an online presence. And there's a few different ways of doing that. First of all, you can go down the route of having like a really successful successful Instagram channel or TikTok channel or YouTube channel so that everybody knows who you are. You know, if you've got 20,000 followers on Instagram and you release a trick and you can shout out it to your Instagram followers who are mainly magicians, there's a very good chance that people will buy what it is that you're selling, right? Um, so there's that. You could be releasing tricks in magazines. You know, there's lots of magazines like Magic Scene and Genie and Vanish Magazine and if you and Penguin Magic Magazine. And if you go to them and you say, hey, I've got this trick, will you publish Publish it for me. I don't want anything in return. They'll say yes. More people are reading who you are, right? Being active on forums like the Magic Cafe and Facebook is another great way of doing it so that people know who you are. Entering competitions is a great way. Having a presence online. Enter America's Got Talent. Enter Britain's Got Talent. So Ryland, for example, he's only 10 years old. He released his first product when he was nine. And uh, Alakazam, you know, had the product and said yes. One, because it was a good trick, but two, because everybody knows who Ryland is. He's got a very well-known, he's well-known within this community. He may only be nine or 10 now, but he's been on Britain's Got Talent. He's been on America's Got Talent. He's entered various different competitions around the UK. Um, he does the review show with me. He's got 20,000 followers on Instagram. He's got a big, thriving YouTube channel. Um, he's got uh, a presence on Facebook. He's got like three or 4,000 followers on Facebook. All of this stuff means that he's well-known and so when he goes to a producer and say, hey, I want to bring a trick out, it helps. If there's certain boxes that need to be ticked, that's a box that can be ticked. Now, it's not the be-all or end-all. Absolutely not. You Again, I've got to reiterate, if you don't want to go to the trouble of being well-known, that's absolutely fine. But there's more of a chance that people will say yes to you because there's less of a risk to the production company if you've got a name and people will gravitate to you. If you've got a following, if you've got an army of fans that listen to what you you've got to say, then you're more likely to have people buy from you and the producers will know that. It's very important. I would suggest having an online presence. Okay, so the next thing, next point is make sure that the trick is good and worked in. Make sure that the trick is good and worked in. When you send this to people to the various production companies, which we're going to get to in a bit, they're going to be assessing whether it's a good trick. Don't half ass it, especially if you've never pitched a production company before. You only get one chance to make a first impression. When I spoke to these various different production companies and I asked for their advice about what content to put in this video, a lot of people said, well, you know what? Um, we have people that submit stuff all of the time and a lot of it's not very good. So we get to a point that when they submit a video, we don't even look at it properly because we just know it's going to be more of the same. You don't want to get into that position. When you pitch something to a, uh, to a production company, you want to make sure it's something that's really, really good. You want to make sure it's something that's worked in. Trust me, you can tell when somebody releases a trick and it's not being worked in. You can just tell. It's one of the reasons why my products have such big tutorials to it. It's because I've worked it in before I've actually 
um, got to a point where I'm selling it to a production company. So because I've worked it in, I know a lot more about that trick than if I hadn't worked it in. And I know that this will work best in this situation. This will work best in this situation. This is an alternative to this. This is an alternative to that, right? You only know that by working it in. So make sure it's worked in and make sure it's good. So you've got your trick, you know it's worked in, you know it's good. There is one more thing I do, I, I'd say here, do your research, okay? You wanna make sure that it's original and it's new to you. You wanna show it around to people within the community that you can trust, people that you know won't rip it off, won't try and claim it as their own trick. Show it to people and just say, hey, have you seen anything like this before? Is this a unique idea? Because what you don't want to do is pitch something to a production company and have them turn around to you and say, oh, that's been done before because then they're going to be thinking well hang on a minute has this guy got an original idea or even worse and this has happened to me with red you don't want to pitch it to a production company have them pay to have it designed have the packaging done have it filmed have it all of that stuff done only to then find out it's not original and now that company's made a massive loss and they're probably not going to work with you again because of that reason so make sure that it's original do your due diligence and do your research Okay, next point, you're gonna send it to any and all companies. I know there's a company that you probably wanna work with. Oh my gosh, I really wanna work with Illusionist. Illusionist are the company that I bought, I, I got bought into Magic with, I love their stuff. I wanna send it to Illusionist because my dream is to work with Illusionist, that's great. But if you send it to just one production company, you've only got one chance of somebody saying yes or no. If you send it to a bunch of different production companies at the same time, you've got more of a chance of people saying yes and if one person says yes and everyone says no well then that's a yes if you've got everybody saying yes well then you can kind of know, go into negotiations but you want to send it to any and all companies you want to send it to everybody and when you send it to people keep it really succinct now on the website for the production company there's usually a submit your trick section where you can click on submit your trick and you can submit it directly from the website if you want to do that that's fine include the video link we'll talk about a video in a bit but include the video link and just do one paragraph hey my name's craig i'm a magician over in the uk i've been performing professionally for like 30 years and this is a trick that i've used in my act for the last 15 years i think it's a really great trick and it's definitely something that i think that other magicians would enjoy as well i've put a video link down below but any questions please let me know i look forward to hearing from you you're professional you're to the point a lot of production companies get hundreds of submissions every single week so you don't want to do a 20 page email outlining the history this is not the time to do that this is just a quick hey thanks very much for looking at my video and then you put the video link also if you are going to put it through the submit your trick section on the website send them an email as well send them a follow-up email just saying hey just so you know guys i've just submitted a trick through to blah 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 blah. Uh, I'm, I'm sending you an email as well just so you know that I've sent it thanks very much any questions please let me know as a backup because maybe they'll miss it if it goes through that that main section right so but send it to any and all people include a paragraph telling them who you are and you know that you're really glad that they're going to have a chance to have a look at it and and just leave it at that be polite be professional but send it to everybody Okay, so the next section is when you're doing your tutorial, don't worry too much about making it a Hollywood blockbuster. That's not important. Don't go out onto the streets and get multiple live performances. Again, it comes back to the fact that a lot of these companies see dozens of these every single day and they're skimming through them, right? They don't care about that production quality. What they care about is they care about seeing the trick and what it is. So do a performance of the trick, right? Don't do a 15 minute monologue first about why this trick is so amazing let them make their own mind up it's that old expression isn't it don't tell me you're funny make me laugh don't tell me that the trick's good show me that the trick's good do a performance and then after the performance just do a 60 second outlining what it is you know you don't have to do a full tutorial it doesn't have to be a one-hour tutorial it could be a case of uh, okay let's use 
Keymaster, for example. Okay, so if I was pitching Keymaster to Penguin again, I'd send them a video and the video would have in it a performance of the main Keymaster routine. And then in the follow-up bit, I might say, okay, now I envisage this having four keys and uh, this key is going to have two holes in it. This key is going to have no holes in it. This key is going to be normal. This key is going to have a hole in the stem because then that allows me to do this. And basically it's just two switches and that's all it is and blah, 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 blah. You just keep it really simple, really succinct. You don't have to do a full tutorial. You want to get this to let Less than three minutes ideally with the performance and the tutorial now is not the time to do a 20 minute monologue or a 15 minute storytelling routine showcasing it this isn't the time they want it quick and they want to just understand what the performance is and a brief synopsis of how the method works okay so the next point i've got here is keep it quick and succinct which is kind of the same as what i said before but i think it's really important enough to reiterate it you are not going to get your video watched if it's 20 minutes long you're not going to watch your they're not going to watch your video if it's 10 minutes long if they see a 20 minute video they're going to scrub halfway through and they might miss some important points from the beginning of the video so just get straight into it don't say a hi my name's craig and i'm boom performance done synopsis done that's it keep it simple keep it succinct okay so the next point is within the video what you do want to do is you want to outline the costs and you want to outline the gimmicks okay so you want to outline what the gimmick would be and the costs that would be incurred in making this up. Now, they're probably gonna have their own way of producing the gimmick if they say yes to you, but you wanna point out a few things that they're gonna to need to know. So if it uses a special card, you could say, now this special card uses this, 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 and this. It takes me about five minutes to make up each card. Because think about it, if they're gonna sell this, they're gonna to have to sell hundreds of them. So they're gonna need somebody to make it up for them. Now that might be done internally, like Penguin have their own gimmick producing section to their company, or it might be something that they outsource. You never know, but they're gonna to need to know that information. So no, yeah, show them what the gimmick is, if it needs to be made up, how long does it take you to make that gimmick up, and also the costs that are associated with that gimmick. How much does it cost? So, for example, I'm doing something with Alakazam soon, and it's a very special gimmick um, that needs to be included with it, and I got prices for Pete Nardi at Alakazam. I was like, right, if you want to run with 500, it's this much. If you want to run with 1,000, it's this much. 2000 it's this much this is the company that gave me those quotes oh and by the way here's quotes from five other companies as well but this is the most competitive this is the one that i would go for we could 3d print it but i wouldn't recommend it because 3d printing wouldn't work for this reason this reason this reason i literally gave him all the information make it easy for them to make a decision because if you make it difficult for them to make a decision if you're putting them in their mind where they're thinking well this is really good but i don't know how much this is going to cost and they have to do the research they might forget life gets in the way it might be something that ends up not happening whilst it would have happened if you presented all this information to them it's your trick nobody knows about what needs to be done with it more than you so put in there the costs put in there the gimmick put in there how long it takes the gimmick to make and give them some quotes because this is the information they need to know from a business point of view to know whether it's practical or not as to whether to produce this Okay, so the next point is have a prototype. Have a prototype that you can show the company and you can say, right, this is a prototype. This is exactly what it's going to look like. Um, because if you just say to them, oh, I've got this trick and it's a really good idea and it's going to need this and it's going to need this and it's going to need this and hopefully you guys can make that for me there's less chance that they're going to say yes. So, for example, my next Murphy's release is a, um, a, a, a specially printed deck of cards, I want to say. And um, it's, it's pretty cool. I love it. And um, I can't wait for you guys to see it, but that's not what this video is about. It's a specially printed deck of cards that uh, does a lot. And I paid Phil Smith to, to design the cards for me and give me the artwork. And then I went to made playing cards to actually have those cards made up as a prototype. And I did all of that and then I showed it to Murphy's Magic. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want to say, okay, this is what the deck is, this is what it does. What do you think? I wanted to be able to, because it's kind of a weird concept, the deck that I, I'm, I'm bringing out soon, it's kind of a weird concept and I wanted to show them exactly how I envisaged it. So I, I said, here's the artwork, here's the deck. 
this is what it's capable of, this is what it does, I will send a few copies over to you so you can see it. And immediately they said yes, immediately it was greenlit because I was able to show them exactly what it looked like. That gimmick that I talked about that I'm doing with Alec Azam, I had that 3D printed. I went to Drew Perry and I hired him to make it for me so I could then show it to Alec Azam. And, uh, and I was able to show Pete the, fir the finished product and say, look, this is what it is, Pete. What do you think? So have a prototype because I'm not saying it's the be all end all. I know that this company, I've done it in the past. I've gone to um, Penguin, for example, and I've said, hey, this is the idea. I haven't got a prototype for it, but I reckon you guys could make one. And I've not got a prototype, but they've come back to me and said, hey, does it look something like this? But generally, as a rule, that's not the way to go. Generally, as a rule, you want a prototype so that you can show it so they can understand exactly what it is that people will be buying. OK, so the next point is don't give up. Uh, you know what? Uh, I always point to uh, so my uh, I've. I've you know, I've been in university um, and I've got a couple of degrees, but one of my degrees, I have a BA in business, entrepreneurialism and marketing. And for my dissertation at university, I did a comparison between James Dyson and Richard Branson and two entrepreneurs. And I kind of compared them and there was a, there was a big part of it. But um, what I find fascinating is when you look at James Dyson, that's the guy that invented the Dyson vacuum cleaner. I can't remember exactly now because this is when I was 18 and I'm now very old. But I think it was something like 8,000 different prototypes that he went through before he got a Dyson, a dual cyclone system that actually worked. Think about how many times he's failed. You know, he's, oh, right, okay, attempt number 5,000. Nope, that didn't work. Attempt number 5,050. Nope, that didn't work. You know, he kept going. He kept going. He kept going. And eventually, he made it work. But then when he was going to the banks for a loan to actually build this thing, he got turned down by, I think, 100 banks until eventually somebody gave him the loan. And, and being an entrepreneur is all about never giving up. And if you're failing, that's fine. But fail forward. Learn from that mistake. And then you will grow. The reason I tell you that is because you want to don't give up. You might pitch this product to every single production company and they all might say no. And that's absolutely fine. Not a problem. Put it on the shelf. Maybe you come back to it a few years down the line, but then work on the next thing and pitch the next thing and pitch the next thing. If you want to be successful, if you want to be a successful creator, if you want to bring magic out to the magic industry and you consider yourself creative, then you can do this. But you have to have the right mindset. You have to have the mindset of never give up, always hustle, always push forward and just keep going. That's the way that you become successful by never giving up. Look at me. I'm too stupid to quit. I went on Facebook a little while ago after the whole Jake Jr. thing and a load of hate on my comment on my uh, my channel, which happens from time to time. And I said, you know what? I feel like giving up on YouTube. And at the time, I did feel like that. And I slapped myself around the face. I told me to stop being a dickhead. And I just keep pushing forward. You know, that's what you've got to do. If you want to be successful, just keep pushing forward. Never give up. The next section is follow up if you've not heard anything after about a week. You know, from a sales point of view, you know, we do sales here. This is what my company does. We sell entertainment packages to people and companies. And the thing I say to the salespeople all of the time is the fortunes in the follow up. A lot of times people won't book immediately. They'll book the second time you contact them, the third time you contact them. I think there's something like the marketing associations say you need to have 12 touch points between initial contact and booking and you need to be in touch with them in a whole bunch of different ways, sending them an email, showing them a social media link, speaking to them on the phone, whatever it may be. Well, it's the same with pitching to a company. You want to follow up. If you haven't heard anything in a week or two, it doesn't mean that it's a no. It means that they've got busy. Heck, they might not have even seen it. There's no harm in sending an email or giving them a call up and saying, hey, it's Craig here. I was just wondering if you had a chance to look at it. One thing that I've learned is a lot of magic production companies, the main person in charge, can be very difficult to get hold of. Lloyd is a 
bloody nightmare. Uh, he really is to get a hold of. Pete Nardi is a lot of the time very, very busy. Uh, the, the best person I've found to get in touch with, to be honest, is Dee Christopher in the 1914. Everyone else is a nightmare. Sean Dunn is a nightmare. Um, love him to bits. Nightmare to get hold of. Um, a lot of people are. So uh, it's, 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 you, what you want to do is follow up. If you haven't heard anything, keep on at them. Keep on at them. Keep on at them. Just get, just until you get a no, until you get a no, until you get a no, keep chasing it up. Hey, have you had a chance to think about it? Have you thought about it? Is this something that your company wants to produce? And if you've got two or three, if you sent it out to everyone and a couple of people have said yes, well, now I'm not saying you play one off against each other, but then you've got an option where you can choose where to go, right? Which is another reason to send it out to everybody. But follow up, follow up if you haven't heard something, follow up. The fortune is in the follow up. I got two more points. I'm going to do a separate video about how to make sure your product is a success. But at this point, you've followed up and it's either yes or a no. If it's a no, like I say, don't give up. Work on to the next thing. Don't mope around for ages and go, well, I'm not going to be a magic creator. If you think that, then you won't. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It's not easy. Not everybody does it. You want to be ahead. You want to get ahead. You want to be successful. You want to be a creator. You've got to go out there and you've got to really push for it. Never give up. It's like I said, never give up. Keep pushing for it. If they say no, keep going, keep going, keep going. And eventually you will get a yes. And while, they're, while you're working on another product, work on building your online profile up, work on building your your brand up so that when you go back to them, it's like, oh my God, this is this guy. He's definitely somebody we want to work with. Look at Amanda Nepo. Amanda Nepo's brought a few things out with Penguin Magic and they've been really good, d d really good. I reckon they probably said yes to Amanda initially because she's been on Penn and Teller. You know, that's a huge platform. Everybody knows who she is. That probably helped her cause when the Penguin was saying yes to their tricks. The tricks are great but they get submitted tons of tricks. So what makes Amanda's trick better than anyone else's? Well, they're really good, but the other thing is she's had national TV exposure. It's the same with Ryland. Would you say yes to a 10-year-old? Probably not. How about 10-year-old that's been on America's Got Talent and Britain's Got Talent? Well, then you've got more likely a chance to say yeah, right? So keep building your brand. If they say no, keep working on your brand, keep working on your online profile until you get that yes. So like I say, I'm gonna do another video on what to do to make your product successful. Successful, but two points that I want to bring up after they've said yes. The first thing is be a joy to work with. Now, one thing that hopefully most production companies will tell you, uh, other than maybe Prop Dog, is that I was a real joy to work with. You know, like I'll give you an example. So this trick that's coming out through Murphy's soon, I uh, filmed live performances. They told me to get live performances and uh, they couldn't come with me. So they sent somebody with me, they sent a videographer with me and they sent me to Slights Bar in Bath. And they told me to do explanations all day, two days. So I was, I was there at nine o'clock, explanations till about five o'clock in, uh, in the evening. Um, and then uh, two days in a row. And then on the Saturday night, I went and worked in the Slights Bar from seven until three in the morning, getting live performances. And it was great and everything was fine but they needed more live performances. The live performances they had weren't enough. And Lloyd rang me and he said, look, we need some more live performances of certain particular types of tricks. Can you help us? And I just finished, he rang me while I was on the way to a corporate event with Nemed in Manchester. And on the way to this corporate event in Manchester, we were doing a 12 till two in Manchester city center. And he's like, we need more performances. We need more performances. Can you help me? And I was like, well, look, when I finish the gig at two o'clock, Nemed's got his camera equipment in the car. We'll go and get some performances. And then me and Nemed went out from sort of, we got food. So from sort of three o'clock, it was 12 till two. So maybe half three onwards till about 10 o'clock at night. I was just going in bars and walking around the street, just getting live performances. That's what I wanted to do because I wanted Murphys to know that if they ask me to do something to do with one of my products, I'm going to do it immediately. It's the same with every single production company that I work for. I want to be a joy to work with because then they're going to have that experience and they're going to want to work with me again and that's always been my approach in life with everything be a person that everybody wants to work with um it, it's what i did with um 
Uh, it's what I did when I was working with World Magic Shop. It's what I do with Penguin. It's what I do with Murphy's, with my own clients. When I turn up to a gig, I am an absolute joy. They need it going back 15 minutes, that's fine. Oh, there's a table over there. Yeah, I'll move it myself. Don't worry. Absolutely everything. It was our approach working on the Got Talent series with Ryland. I said to Ry, when we got there, you want to be a joy to work with. You want to have them think, oh my God, this kid was such a joy to work with. You know, we want to bring him back. You know, it's, it's, it's my MO. It's what I try to do. So be a joy to work with. Okay, so the next point, and as I say, I'm going to do a longer video about this, but, but this is kind of important and fits in with this. Um, when it comes time to release the product, promote it like crazy. Don't just leave it to the company to promote. You promote it yourself. I have seen so many people that, that comment on my YouTube channel bitching and moaning about this company or that company or the other company because they released their trick through them and it didn't sell very well and they're blaming that company. Trust me, the company that released your trick, they really want that trick to be a success because that's their business model. Their business model is to release tricks. They want your trick to be a success and they will have done whatever they can to make it a success but they can't do it alone. You need to do it as well. I've seen so many tricks come out through various different creators and I've never seen them post about it once on Facebook, on Twitter, on social media. I've got an email list and you'll know when a new trick comes out because I'll blast people with an email. Um, you'll know when it comes out because I'll do a review show special on, on, on my channel for it. I'll promote it on Instagram. I get Ryland's pro to it on his Instagram. I'll probably be teasing it um, on the run up for it coming out like I've just been talking about this Murphy's release. Me talking about it in the context of this video is teasing the fact that this trick is coming out that I'm really excited about. You want to promote it yourself. Don't bitch and moan that it's not been successful if you've left it to the company. You have to do it yourself. It's hard work. You have to do it. And again, it comes back to the fact that if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Pull your finger out and get to work. And one final point on the whole thing uh, is when they've said yes, make sure that you have a contract in place. Go get that contract and sign that contract. That contract protects you. It also protects the company. It's really important that it is contracted. Uh, if you have a yes and you haven't had a contract, chase them up for it. Hey, is there a contract I can sign? You want to make sure you know what everything is. Different companies work in different ways. You don't want to work on the deal with this company before you've pitched it. You want to pitch it first of all and get a yes, and then you want to work on the deal. And different companies work in different ways. Some will buy it out and give you a Cash price. Some of them won't. Some of them will um, uh, pay you royalties. It's different with each company. And we can talk about that down the line. We can talk about different companies. And if you want me to do a video on different companies and how they operate and what their terms and conditions are and what they like to work with, I can do that. That's not a problem. But the most important thing is that you have a contract in place. It's going to protect you. It's going to let you know exactly what that company expects of you and what you are going to get in return. And it's going to protect the company. So the second you get a yes, and if you get more than one yes, ask them for the term. Say, look, I've got to be honest, Illusionist and Vanishing Inc. both want this. Can you tell me what the terms are so I can decide between you? I'm not trying to play you one off against each other. I just want to know what you guys are offering so I can make a decision. Uh, you know, it's really important that you kind of do that and you have it all written down on paper. So there you go, guys. That's the next video. That's how to pitch a product to a magic company. That is what I've done every time I've pitched a product. And it's what you should do if you want to become a magic creator. Uh, now it's over to you. I want you to let me know in the comments down below. Do you want to see follow-up videos on this? Do you want to see a follow-up video on how to actually promote a product to make sure it's successful? Do you want to uh, see a video on how to actually leverage having a product out to get bigger and better deals from other production companies? Do you want to uh, see a video on uh, how sales technique when it comes to pitching a product or anything like that? Please let me know in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this? All you got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below now i'm going to be back again uh tomorrow with another video but if you want to join the netrix please do so it's www.thenetrix.com that's www.thenetrix.com go check it out see what all the fuss is about we've got a discord server right now as well on the netrix we're building up the biggest community in magic and we want you to be a part of it so go join get access to hundreds of tricks and join the community i'll see you again soon thank you very much for watching my name is craig from magic TV.